So our first question, if you look at figure 1.1, I just want to get my pen out, is regarding pressure cells. But before we look at the questions, just as quickly have a look what's been given to us. Okay. First of all, we've got a pressure cell A and we've got a pressure cell B. Now, very importantly over here, grade 12, pay attention to the circulation of A and A. You can see it's in a clockwise circulation. There's the arrows indicating the clockwise circulation. Then, the lines joining places with equal pressure is known as isobars. Okay, it's lines joining places with equal pressure. Let me just write it down there. Okay. With equal pressure. And the unit of measurement that we used is millibar or hectopascal. Now, in this case, you can see A gives us an isobar reading of a thousand and a thousand and two. Now, normally, now, first of all, we can see that this low pressure system is over South Africa. So the drawing, as you can see, represents South Africa. Okay. Now, very importantly, what we need to know over here. When we deal with low pressure systems in the southern hemisphere, because we're in the southern hemisphere, it's a clockwise circulation of air. Okay. Now, high pressure systems are anti-clockwise circulation of air. Okay, so South Africa is in the southern hemisphere, and when we deal with low pressure systems, it's going to be clockwise circulation of air. And when we deal with high pressure systems, it's going to be anti-clockwise circulation of air. Now, very importantly, what do we know the difference between the two? How can we differ differentiate between the two? Low pressure systems is rising air. Okay. High pressure systems sinking air. Now, immediately, what I can take notice from these pressure cells in figure 1.1 is that we can assume that it's summer in southern Africa because we experience a low pressure system over the interior. Okay, by now you should know as well, when we look at our anticyclonic circulations, we've got three high pressure systems that dominate South Africa's climate during what, all the time because we are situated on the 30 degree subtropical high pressure belt. But what's evident in winter is the caloric high pressure system over the interior. Okay. It's absent, we have a low pressure system, so that means we have high temperatures, okay? So, as you can see, the, the isobar reading is 1,002 hectopascal and 1,000. You can see the clockwise circulation. But now, let's just quickly go and have a look at B. Okay, first of all, the arrows. We have anti-clockwise circulation. So that indicates it's a high pressure system. Now, just a tip. Have a look at the isobar reading. 1,016 hectopascal, 1,018 hectopascal. Okay. To identify high pressure systems, the pressure is always above 1,014 millibars or hectopascal. Okay. So as you can see, so B we can identify as a high pressure system. Quite simple because of the anti-clockwise circulation. A is a low pressure system, clockwise circulation, and we can identify, if they ask the question, what season is it, we can definitely identify this diagram as summer conditions because we have our low pressure over the interior. Okay, it's rising air because of warm conditions. Okay, but let's have a look at the questions. If you look at question 1.1, Study figure 1.1, which shows two common pressure systems, A and B, that occurs over South Africa. Match each of the statements below to either pressure cell A or B. Okay. Now, question 1.1.1, known as the heat low pressure cell. Now, I've mentioned to you heat. What does low pressure do? 
It's rising air. Why? The air rises because of warm conditions. We experience warm conditions, the air rises. It expands and it rises. Like I've mentioned, a heat pressure cell, so the correct answer will be A. Now, question 1.1.2, also referred to as an anticyclone. Now, let me just write it down there. We identify cyclones as low pressure systems, just to give you an indication, indication for instance, mid latitude cyclones that we experience during winter. And then obviously, we also have the fears that causes a lot of destruction, tropical cyclones. that we experience. Tropical cyclones, I'm just making notes over here for you to understand the concepts much better, also known as hurricanes, typhoons, or willy willies. Okay, so the correct answer for anti-cyclone, just write down there, is our high pressure systems anticyclones, and there's three of them dominating South Africa's mid-latitude, no, high pressure, subtropical high pressure belt, it's the South Atlantic anticyclone, Kalahari during the winter, And we have the South Indian anticyclone. Okay. All of them are known as high pressure systems. Okay. So there's some notes that you can add to your notebook. Also referred to as anticyclones, the correct answer will be B. Now, associated with unstable weather conditions. Now, the formation for unstable air conditions is always rising air, okay? Because what happens when air rises? Okay, depending on the moisture, right? Depending on the moisture, what happens with the rising air? We experience condensation, okay? So the water vapor turns back into water droplets. Now, unstable conditions is where condensation takes place at dew point temperature, we had cloud formation, and we got the possibility of rain. Okay, stable conditions is usually sinking air associated with high pressure systems. Okay, it's subsidence taking place. Now, if you look at, for instance, example of anticyclonic circulation, if you look at winter in central southern Africa, usually clear blue skies is because of the Kalari high pressure system. Okay, it's stable conditions because of sinking air that we experience because of the high pressure system. But unstable conditions is usually rising air because of warm conditions taking place. Or in the case of mid-latitude cyclones, it's when cold air forces the warm air to rise. But that's going to be one of our next questions. So I'm not going to go into too much detail with that topic right now. So if you look at the associated with unstable weather conditions, the correct answer will be A. Now if you look at question 1.1.4, causes southeasterly winds to blow over the east coast of South Africa. Okay, now this is quite easy to understand. Now, if you look at direction, because of the anti-clockwise circulation in this high pressure system, north, east, south, west, because of the anti-clockwise circulation of air, the air is blowing in a southeasterly direction. Remember, wind is named from the direction it's coming from. Now, if you look at the circulation of air, anti-clockwise, it blows in a southeasterly direction onto the east coast, okay, of southern Africa. Okay, it's because of the anti-cyclonic circulation of air taking place in this high-pressure system. So the correct answer over there will be B. Okay, if we quickly have a look at 1.1.5. 1 
Okay, divergence, air divergence from this pressure cell. Okay, it's quite simple. Now, the first time you were introduced with convergence and divergence was actually with plate boundaries in grade 10. Okay, that's geomorphology. But then we discussed divergence and convergence once again in global air circulation. So, what is divergence? Divergence is moving away from each other. Okay, convergence moving towards. Okay, so question 1.1.5, air diverges from this pressure cell. So, from the pressure cell, that's key. So basically what happens, when the air sinks with the high pressure, it can't go through the, system, through the surface, what happens? Divergence taking place. So the correct answer for 1.1.5 will be B. Okay, now if we have a look at this, 1.1.6, the next question, dominates the land in summer. Now as you can see, if you look at B and A, the two pressure cells, which one is over the land? That's quite a straightforward answer. The correct answer will be A. And another key word over there is summer. And we all experience, we know during summer, we experience high temperatures. So what does the air do? It rises, warm conditions. So it's definitely a low pressure system. Okay. 1.1.7, now if we especially look at summer, once again, re we're revising grade 10 work, convection thunderstorms, now that's exactly what happens. Now during the daytime, the temperature warms up, the air rises, there's enough moisture in the air, what happens? The air condenses, cools, it condenses, cloud formation, and it leads to the possibility of rain. And this is because strong convection uplift because of the warm temperatures that's being experienced. So 1.1.7, the correct answer will also be A, is the low pressure system that we experience over the interior. Okay. okay.